Parathyroid cancer is a rare type of cancer that affects the parathyroid glands, which are small glands located in your neck near the thyroid gland. Most people have four parathyroid glands. They're about the size of a grain of rice. These tiny glands play a big role in regulating calcium in our body. The main job of parathyroid glands is to produce parathyroid hormone, or PTH. This hormone helps control the amount of calcium in our blood. When calcium levels are low, the glands release more PTH. This hormone tells our bones to release calcium into the blood. It also signals our intestines to absorb more calcium from food. PTH even tells our kidneys to hold onto calcium instead of letting it leave in urine. In parathyroid cancer, one of these glands develops abnormal cells that grow out of control. These cancer cells continue to produce PTH, often in large amounts. This excess PTH causes calcium levels in the blood to rise too high. This condition is known as hypercalcemia. Parathyroid cancer is extremely rare. The incidence of this condition is about 1 in 1 million people per year. In the United States, there are only about 100 new cases diagnosed each year. This makes it one of the rarest forms of cancer. It's so uncommon that many doctors may never see a case in their entire career. Causes of parathyroid cancer The exact cause of parathyroid cancer is not well understood. However, there are several factors that may increase the risk of developing this condition. One known risk factor is a genetic condition called multiple endocrine neoplasia type 1. People with multiple endocrine neoplasia type 1 have a higher chance of developing tumors in their endocrine glands, including the parathyroid glands. While most of these tumors are benign, the risk of cancer is slightly increased. Another genetic condition linked to parathyroid cancer is hyperparathyroidism jaw tumor syndrome. This rare disorder increases the risk of parathyroid tumors, both benign and cancerous. People with this syndrome often develop tumors in their jaw as well. Exposure to high doses of radiation, especially to the head and neck area, may increase the risk of parathyroid cancer. This could be from radiation therapy for another cancer or from environmental radiation exposure. In some cases, parathyroid cancer can develop from a benign parathyroid tumor. However, this transformation is very rare. Most benign parathyroid tumors never become cancerous. Age and gender may play a role in parathyroid cancer risk. It seems to occur more often in people over 50, and it's slightly more common in women than in men. However, given how rare this cancer is, these differences may not be statistically significant. Symptoms of parathyroid cancer The symptoms of parathyroid cancer are primarily related to the high calcium levels in the blood. These symptoms can develop gradually and may be subtle at first. Many people with parathyroid cancer don't realize anything is wrong until their calcium levels become very high. One common symptom is fatigue. People with parathyroid cancer often feel tired all the time. This fatigue doesn't improve with rest. It can be frustrating and impact daily life. Another frequent symptom is bone pain. The excess PDH causes calcium to leave the bones, making them weak and painful. This pain can occur in any bone, but is often felt in the legs, arms, or lower back. Kidney problems are also common in parathyroid cancer. The high calcium levels can lead to kidney stones. These stones can cause severe pain in the side or back. Some people may notice blood in their urine. Over time, the high calcium can also damage the kidneys, leading to decreased kidney function. Many people with parathyroid cancer experience digestive issues. They may feel nauseous or lose their appetite. Some people have constipation. In severe cases, people might develop pancreatitis, which causes intense abdominal pain. Mental changes can occur due to high calcium levels. People might feel confused or have trouble concentrating. Some experience depression or mood swings. In extreme cases, a person might become unconscious if calcium levels get too high. Other symptoms can include increased thirst and frequent urination. Some people notice weakness in their muscles. They might also feel generally unwell, with vague aches and pains. It's important to note that these symptoms aren't specific to parathyroid cancer. They can occur with benign parathyroid tumors or other conditions that cause high calcium levels. 
However, symptoms tend to be more severe and progress more quickly with parathyroid cancer compared to benign conditions. Before we continue, if you have been finding the video helpful so far, hit the like button and don't forget to subscribe and hit the bell icon so you don't miss more videos like this. Diagnosis of Parathyroid Cancer Diagnosing parathyroid cancer can be challenging due to its rarity. Often, it's not suspected until after surgery for what was thought to be a benign parathyroid tumor. However, the first step is usually blood tests. These tests check calcium levels in the blood. They also measure PTH levels. In parathyroid cancer, both calcium and PTH levels are typically very high. These levels are often higher than what's seen with benign parathyroid tumors. If blood tests suggest a problem with the parathyroid glands, imaging tests are usually the next step. These might include ultrasound, CT scans, or MRI scans of the neck. These tests can show if there's a tumor on one of the parathyroid glands. They can also help determine if the tumor has spread beyond the gland. A special type of scan called a Sestamibi scan is often used. This involves injecting a small amount of radioactive material into the bloodstream. This material is absorbed by overactive parathyroid glands. A special camera then creates images showing where the material has collected. In some cases, a doctor might perform a fine needle aspiration biopsy. This involves using a thin needle to take a small sample of cells from the suspicious area. However, this isn't always possible or recommended, as it can potentially spread cancer cells. The definitive diagnosis of parathyroid cancer usually comes after surgery to remove the tumor. A pathologist examines the removed tissue under a microscope. They look for certain features that distinguish cancer cells from benign tumor cells. Treatment for parathyroid cancer Treatment for parathyroid cancer typically involves a combination of approaches. The primary treatment is surgery. The goal is to remove the entire tumor along with some surrounding healthy tissue. This is called an end-block resection. The surgery for parathyroid cancer is more extensive than for benign parathyroid tumors. In addition to removing the affected gland, the surgeon might also remove nearby lymph nodes. They might need to remove part of the thyroid gland or other nearby structures if the cancer has spread. Getting all of the cancer during the first surgery is crucial. If some cancer cells are left behind, they can continue to grow and spread. This makes future surgeries more difficult and less likely to be successful. After surgery, many patients receive radiation therapy. This treatment uses high-energy beams to kill any remaining cancer cells. It's often used if there's a high risk that some cancer cells were left behind after surgery. Chemotherapy, which uses drugs to kill cancer cells throughout the body, isn't typically used for parathyroid cancer. This is because parathyroid cancer cells don't usually respond well to current chemotherapy drugs. However, researchers are exploring new drugs that might be more effective. Managing high calcium levels is an important part of treatment. Even after the tumor is removed, it can take time for calcium levels to return to normal. In some cases, the cancer may come back, causing calcium levels to rise again. Medications can help lower calcium levels. These might include drugs that reduce calcium absorption from the intestines or increase calcium excretion through the kidneys. Some patients might need bisphosphonates. These are drugs that help strengthen bones and reduce the release of calcium from bones into the blood. In severe cases, a treatment called dialysis might be needed to quickly remove excess calcium from the blood. After initial treatment, close monitoring is essential. This involves regular blood tests to check calcium and PTH levels. Imaging tests are also done periodically to check for any signs that the cancer has come back or spread. If parathyroid cancer does come back after initial treatment, additional surgery is often the first choice. This might be followed by more radiation therapy. In cases where surgery isn't possible, doctors might try other approaches to control the cancer and manage symptoms. The rarity of parathyroid cancer can make it feel isolating for patients. It's important for people with this diagnosis to seek support. This might come from family and friends, support groups, or mental health professionals. Despite the challenges, many people with parathyroid cancer have good outcomes, especially if the cancer is caught early. The five-year survival rate for parathyroid cancer is around 85%, 
if the cancer hasn't spread beyond the parathyroid glands. Now, we want to hear from you. Do you or someone you know have parathyroid cancer? What symptoms did you have at first? Share with us your experiences and opinions in the comments below. We love to hear them. Thanks for watching.